close your eyes and take a couple of long, deep in and out breaths. Notice where you feel the breathing in the body. It might be in some places you might not expect, because it's not just the air coming in and out through the nose. There's the rise and fall of the abdomen, the rise and fall of the chest, sometimes the shoulders. Sometimes you feel breath energy in other parts of the body too. But wherever it's most prominent, focus there. Now watch it all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. Try to get a sense of what kind of breathing would feel good right now, long breathing or short breathing, fast, slow, heavy, light. Make some adjustments as you see necessary. And it's in this way that you can find some pleasure inside, some well-being inside that doesn't have to depend on things outside. So much of our happiness in life depends on things outside being a certain way. But as the Buddha pointed out, the, the good things in life come from our own actions. They come from within. The fact that things outside are good right now or bad right now depends on our, our actions, both present actions and past actions. The important thing is our present actions. You can't do much about the past, but you can focus on the present. When you act, when you speak, when you think, you can ask yourself, what kind of present moment and what kind of future moments are you providing for yourself? Can you act and speak and think in ways where you provide a blessing to yourself? We often come to the monastery for blessings, but the best blessing is when you act in skillful ways, because that's a, that's a sure thing. The fact that the monks wish you well and will say things wishing you well, that's no guarantee that you're going to be happy. But if you do good things, it is a guarantee. Happiness will have to come, as the Buddha said. There's another word for happiness, is acts of merit. Where do they come from? Well, the first they come from being around the right people, people who teach you what's good, what's bad, what's right, and what's wrong. As the Buddha said, not consorting with fools and consorting with those who are wise, showing respect for those worthy of respect. It's a blessing for yourself. It's the highest blessing. This is where all good things start, because without the knowledge of others, we wouldn't know what was right and wrong. But we have to have a sense from within ourselves of what kind of people we can trust and which ones we can't. Try to hang around people that you can trust. When the Buddha says fools, he doesn't mean people who get bad grades in school. He means people who foolishly think that you can gain happiness by acting in unskillful ways, killing, stealing, having illicit sex, and not breaking any of the precepts that we took just now. So who do you want to look for in a good friend? First, conviction in the principle of act karma that your actions do bear results, and your happiness and your suffering de depend on your actions. So you have to be careful about what you do, say, and think. When you hang around a person like that, it gets you into right view, where you begin to see, yes, your actions do shape your life, and you want to learn how to shape them in a good way. The next quality is virtue, someone who would not harm anybody. The next quality is generosity, people who are happy to share what they have. When you hang around people like this, you begin to pick up their habits. And then you want to find someone who's discerning, so someone who understands how it is that we suffer and why we suffer and how we can stop suffering. Because that's what we want. As the Buddha said, when we're in pain, our first reaction is bewilderment, and our second reaction is there's somebody out there who knows a way or two to put an end to the suffering. And if someone not really understands, how to put an end to suffering, and they're kind enough to teach it to you. Okay, you want to hang around that person. That person has a lot to offer you. So this is how you begin blessing yourself, by finding the right people to hang around. And this doesn't refer only to people in the flesh, but also the people you hang around with online. The websites you visit, the social media places where you go. Who are you talking to? What are their values? Are there values that you really want to absorb? If they're the kind of people who say, it doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't matter what you say, as long as you're happy, that, those are the kind of people you have to avoid. Other people who simply say, okay, buy our product and you're going to be happy. Avoid those people, too. They don't have your best interests in mind. The people who have your best interests in the mind are the ones who want to train you to be skillful in what you do and say and think. So be very careful who you hang around. If you hang around with the right people, they are a blessing for you, and you're a blessing for yourself. Your actions are a blessing for you, and of course the blessings spread around. Because when you adopt their habits, you become a person of conviction, a person of generosity, virtue, and discernment. It's going to be good for you both in this lifetime and in lifetimes to come. 
you become a good friend to others now and on into the future.